Hey there, and welcome back to Mass Effect 3. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Mass Effect 3 Insanity walkthrough, and we are in fact continuing right away with the next mission in the game's main storyline. In the last episode, we extracted the Krogan female Eve from the hands of the Salarians over on Sakesh. Our good friend Morden Solis is currently using her help to try to develop a cure for the Genophage, which is apparently what's needed to secure the help of the Krogan in the fight against the Reapers. Now, after the events of Sakesh, we now have two main missions to choose from. First of all, we have learned from Primarch Victus that a Turian platoon on a secret mission has crashed onto Chanka, and he now wants us to investigate and rescue them. At the same time, our Krogan ally Rex has also asked for our assistance with a Krogan team investigating rumors of activity at the Rachni Relay, and that is the mission that we are going to take care of first here today, as anything involving the Rachni definitely seems like a pressing matter, not to mention that Rex is of course a close friend. So let's get right to it, jump into the galaxy map and leave Sakesh for the Ninma Cluster, the former home cluster of the Ragni, and for good reason, the Krogan still keep a watchful eye on this place, so the disappearance of one of their teams certainly raises some concerns. Now, as we arrive, there are unfortunately no valuables or war assets to be found in this cluster. However, we do have a listening post right next to the mass relay, which is of course used to look for signs of the Ragni. However, apart from a brief encounter on Ovaria and a few scattered presences on other planets back in Mass Effect 1, there haven't really been any of those signs for over a thousand years now, and the fact that these latest rumored Ragni activities happen just at the same time as a Reaper invasion definitely seems suspicious to say the least. So, all things considered, we should probably be wary as we now touch down on Utuku, the planet where Rex's Krogan scouts went missing. Now, in today's mission, Javik will get his first run as a squad member, although we want to change his outfit to one that improves power recharge speed instead of power damage. Squad mate number two will then be Garrus, just for the extra bit of banter. Now, in terms of weaponry, we already identified the Ada's anti-synthetic rifle as rather powerful in the last episode, so today we are instead taking with us the M13 Raptor Sniper Rifle, a semi-automatic sniper that we actually found just in the last episode back on Sakesh. Upgraded with two modules for extra damage, we should be able to do some good work with this one, although being a fast-firing weapon, the damage per shot is of course not that great. Now, with Javik, I really think there is only one viable option, and that is to give him the Prothean Particle Rifle. This thing fires a continuous beam of energy and uses a cooldown system instead of ammunition, and with ammo not playing a role for squad members anyway, we can safely slap on a scope and an extended barrel for extra damage. Garrus' loadout meanwhile remains unchanged with the Chrysa sniper rifle and the striker assault rifle, and with that, let us now spend some points. First of all, with 5 points on Shepard, we can grab rank 5 off Adrenaline Rush, and since we don't want the melee damage increase, let us instead upgrade the power duration by 40%. With Garrus, meanwhile, we are saving the two points until we can either max out Overload or Turian Rebel, which now brings us to Javik and a whopping 53 points to spend. And we'll start things off with Dark Channel, an ability that basically works like Biotic Poisoning, targeting a single enemy and dealing damage over time, potentially even jumping over to a second target if the first one dies before the effect wears off. With the upgrades at rank 4, 5 and 6, we can then increase the ability's duration, recharge speed and damage even further, maintaining a healthy balance for one of Javik's core abilities. Speaking of which, arguably even more important are the upgrades on the Vengeful Ancient here, with the first three ranks giving Javik significant boosts to health, shields and power damage. Now overall, Javik is an interesting case, he is very capable as a biotic caster if you will, although he does not and never will have the largest health pools, so in that sense he is very similar to Liara. Unlike Liara, he is also very capable shooting things with a gun, which is already indicated by his ability to actually wield assault rifles. So that is why at ranks 4 and 5 here we are once again maintaining that balance between bionics and weapon damage, and at rank 6 then we are unlocking a very useful increase to shield recharge speed for the entire squad, making our primary layer of defense a bit more powerful. Finally then we invest a few more points to unlock the first 3 ranks of pull, just to have a nice little crowd control ability at hand, which in this next mission here today is actually going to be used a lot more than Dark Channel. Any updates, Shepard? Our backup is waiting for us at the drop point. Arlac Company, Grogan Commandos. That's correct, Shepard. They are an accomplished unit. Their decisive action in liberating a colony from Batarian pirates made them famous. Good to hear. Other than that, 
There's been no word from a team of Krogan scouts since they went through the Rachni relay. Understandable. In my cycle, we use the Rachni as living weapons. Weapons? They were only animals then, without technology. Violent, but useful. When they became a problem, we burned 200 worlds to stop them. We don't know much, but no Rachni activity has been reported. It doesn't make sense. We let that last Rachni queen live on the condition she disappear forever. She wouldn't risk everything to start a war. Just be ready for anything. Yeah, shuttle just arrived. You better get moving, Team 2. See anything, let me know. Grunt? Shepard? <laughs> Shepard! <laughs> What are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. Didn't those idiots lock you up? They did. Put me in lockdown to keep the Patarians off me. Didn't want problems with the Council while they prepared for war. But the situation changed. Yeah, they got bigger problems, all right. That's why I'm out here running Arlac Company. They're tough, think they're invincible. Reckless, but effective. Sounds familiar, Grunt. How did you go from being new and unproven to your own command? <laughs> wasn't easy. When Rex put Arlac Company together, he needed a leader who represented the future of our species. Thanks to you, I completed my rite of passage on Tachanka and became part of Clan Erdnot. I was an equal. And being the strongest, I was chosen to lead this honored company. I bet some didn't like a tank-bred Krogan being in charge. I collected a few scars earning my place here. These Krogan respect me. And with our first dialogue choice of the episode, we can grab two Paragon points here. In my opinion, the best way to start off conversations with friendly faces. You were a pain in the ass, Grunt. But if you're Krogan or half the soldier you are, we might make it out of here. Heh. <laughs> Glad you're here to crack some heads, Shepard. Hard to believe this might be Rachni. Seems crazy. The Rachni. A chance to face the old enemy? <laughs> Impossible to resist. Yes, you are the one. The Krogan who occupied my quarters on the Normandy. You left your mark. What? Who is this, Shepard? You shouldn't be so anxious to face the Rachni. They were formidable opponents, even to my people. Ask me later. <sighs> Whatever you say. We don't know if the Rachni had anything to do with this. We're here to find the scouts. I didn't see any signs of activity during our approach. Agreed. But this place smells wrong. Like a bad wound. Our scans show the tunnels down there lead to a large central point. If we're lucky, it's a nest. Sounds like fun. Just like old times, Grunt. <laughs> Our luck company! Move out! Grab what you need, Shepard. Meet me at the scout camp ahead. Sounds good. Take what you need and move out. Understood. Alright, after quickly setting up our loadout and abilities, we can now head into the container here and grab a few objects of interest, namely some credits, a high caliber barrel for the pistol, and the M300 Claymore shotgun. We are not going to equip that though, so let's keep going. Grunt and the rest of the Krogan are waiting for us just a few meters up ahead. Their base camp has been decimated. The Krogan are overconfident. It's their weakness. In the container over here, we can then grab another high caliber barrel, this time for the SMG. And we also have a weapons bench over on the side here, but we're good to go and don't need it. Ready, Shepard. We're right behind you. Back outside, we can then grab a few spare parts and have a chat with Grunt. You ready to go? Well, almost, but before we get going, let's ask a few questions, not only to catch up with Grunt, but also to learn a bit more about the situation that we're dealing with. Tell me more about this company. Arlac means Eye of Wrath. We are named after the fierce Tichanka son. Rex handpicked us from different clans to show a united Krogan. We were sent because we're the strongest. What happened to the scouting party? Looks like something dropped half their camp down a hole. Their shuttle must have been lost as well. They weren't going anywhere. Doesn't matter. We're here to find the Rachni and burn them out. 
Did Warlord Okir imprint anything on you about the Rachni during your creation? Okir ensured I knew of the Rachni. They are respected as an enemy. Everyone thought they were dead, defeated by the Krogan. You proved that wrong. If they're here, my blood demands they die. What did you do after the Collectors were defeated? I spent most of my time back on Tachanka learning what it was to be Krogan. In the lab where I was created, the lessons were like fighting with practice weapons. They had no bite, no impact. I needed the blood and pain. I made mistakes, but I learned. And with that, we have no more questions to ask, so let's dive in and begin this mission properly. Alright, let's get going. Finally! Right behind you, Shepard. Everyone all right? Shepard! You in one piece? Looks like we're all okay. Keep in radio contact! On our way! And so, we have only one way to go here. Let's see what lies ahead. Ahead of us. I see it. Grunt. Got a body of a scout here. Been dead a few days. Yeah. If he has his weapon, grab it. You won't need it anymore. Is that webbing? Looks like it. And with the Firestorm flamethrower in hand, we can now explore the tunnels further. This darkness is going to make it a little harder, Shepard. Agreed. Everybody be ready. Movement. Anybody catch that? Confirmed. I see something. Yeah, what is that? Careful. We need to be cautious. They're dangerous. Now, we want to keep our distance from these spore pods here and destroy them early. Otherwise, if we get too close, they will burst naturally, and that would cause us to take some damage. Those cords, Shepard. Reaper technology. Maybe. And indeed, something about all of this definitely does not seem natural. At least for now, though, we haven't actually encountered any hostiles, so let us not draw our conclusions too quickly, even though there is very much reason to be concerned. So, as we are now being swamped by husks, we have apparently encountered some form of rachni, although they look quite different, and the presence of the husks as well as a barrier engine that we just destroyed also indicates that Reaper Tech is probably somehow involved here, potentially turning the rachni into even more dangerous enemies than they already were. I hardly recognized them. Reapers made some modifications. Grunt, rachni presence confirmed. Modified and very dangerous. Finally, something to kill. Nothing here yet. Lost a Krogan to a sinkhole. Bad way to go. The breeding ground must be here. The Reapers are protecting an asset of great significance. And indeed, it is very likely that we have only just scratched the surface of this Ragnar business, so let's stay alert as we head deeper into the tunnels. Look at this. No question Reapers have been here. Agreed. Let's find out why. Quick showcase here of what happens if you do get too close. The individual parts, of course, don't do that much damage, but usually there is more than one. Blocked, Shepard. Copy that. How are we getting by this? This looks important. And the Reaper node here is more or less a confirmation of what's going on. Two blasts from the Firestorm, though, are enough to deactivate it. That did it. Looks like we're finding another way out of here. Come on. What was that noise, Shepard? Sounded bad. Cave in. We're all right. Good. Didn't want to dig you out. That hurts my feelings, Grunt. 
Yeah, yeah. Shepard, I know what happened to the scouts. What did you find? They got hit hard. The leader ordered them to carry weapons deep into the caves. He knew the next team would need help. They died making sure we could make it to the central chamber. Come on. Look out! So into the next area we go, and as you saw, we don't need to burn all of the pots and webbing. Only sometimes are there objects, or in this case corpses, of interest behind them. Looks like a last message. He's asked that it be delivered to an Asari named Ereba on the Citadel. So we have obtained a small side quest, sprinted past a few more pots, replenished our Firestorm ammo, and can now proceed. A large area, Commander. Expect trouble. Now, having already encountered one before, the Reaper Barrier device is quickly spotted here. And since we have a sniper rifle equipped, we can briefly drop the Firestorm, and with a few shots, take it out and make the next fight a bit easier. Understood. Yes, Commander. Now, unsurprisingly, I would say we are running into more enemies here. This time, though, not only husks and the modified Ragnai called Ravagers, but we also have some cannibals against us. So, a decent mix of enemies, although the Ravager is arguably the most dangerous one, as it possesses two long-range artillery cannons, and getting hit by a burst from these is absolutely deadly, especially on insanity difficulty. And as you can see, Garrus here volunteers to be a prime example. Sometimes squad members in this part of the map struggle a bit, dropping down to the area that we are currently in. And in that case, they remain up on the ledge above, where there is no cover whatsoever. And if that happens, then the Ravager tends to make quick work of them. Javik, meanwhile, is doing a good job staying behind cover and helping out with the fight. Granted, he does not have the kind of firepower that Garrus possesses. But still, if we continuously pepper our enemies with concussive shot, then he is very capable of cleaning up the battlefield quickly. Another barrier device in the distance then promises more trouble, so let's quickly take it out before we advance. I'm on it. Stay low. Don't let it get a beat on you. Dropping down into cover, we can then once again switch over to the sniper rifle. The Firestorm is considered a heavy weapon though and needs to be completely dropped for this, but that's okay because it does not provide us with any ammo powers, which are needed to unfold the full potential of concussive shot. Once the fight is over, we can then pick the Firestorm back up, of course, Commander. collect a weapon upgrade from the fallen Krogan over here, and then deal with more pods, although this time they actually have something inside of them. We must be getting close, Shepard. Some heavy fighting. Tough bastards. Casualties? It's fine. Krogan fight better angry. Once again, we don't need to destroy them all, but this batch here has some valuable Reaper tech behind it. Push the bug. And indeed, these swarmers here can be nasty if we don't stop them. Again, they only deal a small amount of damage and have basically no health, but as you can see, there are quite a few of them, so we want to keep our distance. The Ragnar usually dwell on toxic planets. This is different. The Reapers must have changed them. They definitely look different. I bet they're breathing an army down here. Breathing like flies. And this place is well hidden. I mean, it adds up. I agree. And they're throwing everything they've got at us so we don't reach the net. Once again then, it definitely helps speed up our progress here if we don't aim to destroy every single pod and swarmer inside of it. If a swarmer or two do manage to catch us, that is not the end of the world. We only want to be careful with those pod fields that completely block the entire way. And so we have finally met up with Aralak Company again. Let us clear a path for them now so that we can proceed. It's up there, Shepard. Come on! And again, we need to destroy another Reaper node here, but before we do, let's collect some goodies, including another pistol weapon upgrade. Thanks, Shepard. That wasn't webbing stopping us. That was Reaper tech. We ran into it too. The Rachni have backed off for now, but they can smell our wounds. 
Any worthy enemy would regroup and finish us. Soon. We're close, Grunt. Those barriers were protecting whatever's down that passage. We'll dig in here, kill anything that moves. Buy you some time. Good luck. I don't need luck. I have ammo. Krogan! Get ready! Yes, at this point, the central chamber seems like the only logical destination, so let's get moving. Heads up, more eggs. Take it slow. Or do the opposite, quickly grab some Reaper Tech and then get out of dodge. What is that? Grunt, we've located the central chamber. Good. We got your back, Shepard. Locate the power node. And that power node is right above us. Heavy resistance! This is it, people! Alright, so at this point our path into the central chamber is blocked, and before we get to talk about what we just saw inside of that chamber, we have more enemies to fight. At this point our objective is to basically fight our way from one Reaper node to the next, until we eventually manage to find and destroy the one that blocks the path into the central chamber. Enemy-wise, we are not encountering anything unusual along the way, just more groups of cannibals, ravagers and husks, with the husks being the ones that should be taken out first, as they are really good at knocking us out of cover, which can be devastating with a ravager in the back just waiting to fire. Shepard, over here. Come on, we gotta get past the barrier. Let's get to the other side! More of those power nodes! And indeed, Garrus confirms it here, it looks like the power node that we just destroyed was not the last. So let's return the way we came and this time fight the enemies coming from the other direction. If you are wondering, by the way, the firestorm is no longer really necessary at this point. Using it effectively in combat would require us to get pretty damn close to our enemies. And with husks on the battlefield, that is of course not recommended. It also actually takes quite some time to do some significant damage with it, which means we would need extended periods of popping our head out of cover, and on insanity difficulty that is something that we better not do, no matter what type of enemy we're facing. Another barrier device meanwhile shows us that we're not done just yet, so let's keep moving towards the next Reaper node. The enemy is as relentless as they were in our cycle. Stay focused! And again, another group of enemies emerges, once again led by a Ravager, this time though a little lower on the husks, which is certainly nothing to complain about. Nonetheless, Garrus does manage to get himself taken out of the fight pretty early on, simply for not being quick enough to get himself into cover. That is also why we are not going to use Unity to revive Garrus here, as there is a very high chance that the same thing is going to happen again. Thankfully though, the fight here is not going to last that long, so he should be back with us in just a moment. With this wave now cleared, we can move on to the next Reaper node, struggle a bit collecting the Firestorm that's right next to it, which again is actually also not necessary, as the node can of course be deactivated with any other weapon as well. Keep it up, people. So, the next wave of enemies is here, the husks in it are thankfully quickly defeated, but of course they are not the only ones standing in our way. And because good game design of course demands that each wave of enemies is getting progressively stronger, we are now facing two Ravagers instead of one. That means double the bombardment and also double the risk of a squad member going down, which as you can see comes to fruition almost immediately. Thankfully though, the Ravagers in this fight have made a rather fast approach, so we can focus most of our attention on taking them out before the cannibals arrive. Paired with the fact that we can take the occasional cannibal out with Javik's pull, this definitely plays in our favor, and so the enemy's most dangerous units are already defeated halfway through the fight. At this point, we only have some cannibals and a handful of husks left, and yes, those can of course do some damage of their own, but if we play things aggressively enough, they should not stand a chance. Copy that.
did this to you? Yes. The sour note of the machines is everywhere. I let you go back in Novaria. You promised not to interfere anymore. The Rachni were supposed to disappear. We remember. We kept our promise. Retreated back through the relay. We started a new home. Beautiful children. Harmony. But the machines came. They heard our song. Their shriek of sour notes drowned us out. Okay, so I think this was pretty well foreshadowed. We are in fact currently standing face to face with the Rachni Queen from Noveria, and let's start things off here with two Paragon points. They can't hurt you anymore. Yes, we understand. Can you still feel the Reapers? Can they influence you? We hear the machines, but they cannot control us. Remove this last shackle, and we are free. Can return. They will destroy us all. Really fast. We're getting movement here. A lot of movement. Copy that, Grunt. Are you capable of fighting the Reapers? We hate the machines. We will fight for our unborn children. Really fast. She's badly wounded. She needs too much time to escape. Shepard, we're out of time. We stay here. Our that company dies. Is that clear? Okay, so time to make a choice, and I think it is indeed pretty clear what has to happen here. One way or another, we have to make a sacrifice, and it's either going to be the Rachni Queen or Aralak Company. Interestingly enough, we will not receive any morality points for either decision, and still we are siding with the Rachni Queen over our Krogan allies, for the simple reason that this decision also results in a solid number of war assets, and deciding in favor of the Rachni gives us slightly more than Aralak Company would. Listen up. Arlak Company holds the Rachni off while the Queen escapes. We'll buy you some time. Grunt, fall back to our position and lead us out. Damn you, Shepard! I'm leaving my team! On my way! Commander? That's an order. She's too valuable an asset to lose. down that path. I'll hold them off. Get out of here, Shepard!
Cortez. We're the last ones out. Copy that, Commander. Shuttle is waiting. Grunt! Anybody got something to eat? Uh. I'm reviewing a report on the Rachni situation, Commander. This could have gotten complicated fast. I hope you know what you're doing, cutting a deal with the Rachni Queen. We got burned last time. I'm trusting your instincts, Commander. We can count on her support, Admiral. I hope so. But we cut the Reaper supply of new Rachni troops and picked up some additional Krogan support. I call that a victory. I've got to get back to it, Commander. Watch yourself out there. Hack it out. Shepard, you made it out of there. Sounds like I missed a hell of a fight. Alright, back on the Normandy with another achievement unlocked, and we can now grab two more Paragon points on top of that in our conversation with Rex here. It was bloody, Rex. We could have used you. Too busy talking rather than fighting. Feeling restless. A war going on and I'm stuck keeping the peace. I heard you made some kind of deal with the Ragnite Queen. If they get out of hand again, it's your ass on the line. Understood. I heard Grunt managed to get out of there with a few scratches. You could say that. We'll get him patched up, back in the fight. Good to hear. I should get back to it. Keep me posted, Shepard. Shepard, test verified. Results promising. Can synthesize for universal Krogan immunity. Good. Then you can put your knife away. The cure's ready? No, still need transmission vector. Cure useless, unless given to entire species. So it looks like we have good news on the genophage cure front as well. And while both dialogue options here pretty much result in us asking Morton for suggestions, let's go with the one at the top for two more Paragon points. You're usually full of ideas, Morton. You altered the genophage before. There must be a way. Of course, always possibilities. But time limited can't create new infection strain from scratch. Groundwater? No, too slow. Voluntary inoculation risky. Population too scattered for airborne. Unless... Wait, yes! The Shroud. Constant global dispersion of air particles, built by Salarians to repair atmosphere of Tuchanka. Also used by Turians. We used it to secretly spread the genophage virus. It ended the Krogan rebellions. I'd be careful who you tell that to. And again, while both assessments here certainly hold some merit, let us go with the Paragon option again, mainly also because it results in a rather snide comment from Shepard himself. Sometimes I understand why the Krogan want to shoot everyone in sight. Those were desperate times. Yes, yes, but useful now. Original genophage strain still in storage at Shroud Facility. Can use it as transmission vector, then use Shroud to blanket Tuchanka with cure. You clever little pie jack. That's our best shot, right there. Then finish your preparations and be ready to go, Morton. Of course. Ready when you need me. We'll be in medbay with Eve until then. Commander, Admiral Anderson is available on VidCom. Alright, so the mission is over, but we have a few more things to take care of. First and foremost, we can check in with Anderson back on Earth. Shepard, so I imagine by now you've wiped the galaxy clean of Reapers and we can all come up for air? Not quite. There have been a few complications. Aren't there always? Hackett filled me in on the Crucible. Sounds like you've got some knots to untangle. I'm just glad I could take care of one of them for you. I gather you and Kaylee Sanders were close. I owe you for that one, Shepard. Kaylee and I met almost 20 years ago. We even had a run-in with Saren in his early days. She and I were... more than close. She misses you. I miss her. End of the world has a way of reminding you what you forgot to do. Maybe when the war's over, Kaylee and I will do something about that. You'll see her soon. I can hope. But you've got a bigger problem right now. Like a galaxy full of scared bureaucrats. 
Now, this conversation does not give us any morality points, so we are free to choose whatever we like here. Considering Anderson's situation, though, I don't think that this is the right moment to be complaining about diplomacy. It's what you hired me to do. Mostly you were hired to kill Reapers. I hope you haven't been sidetracked by all the politics. Nothing I can't handle. What about you? What's happening on Earth? I'll spare you the details. But let's just say a lot of cities around the world have stopped checking in. That bad? You and I knew what we were in for, but everyone else? I don't think the shock's worn off yet. Are you safe? That changes by the hour. I caught a shuttle evac out of Vancouver, and now we're running from Foxhole to Foxhole just trying to stay alive. What about the Reapers? They're harvesting everything that moves. They're focusing on the big cities, which does give us some room to maneuver. You think you can hang on? Hell, we're still just trying to talk to each other. Right now, all we can do is organize the resistance at a local level. No lack of volunteers, at least. Everybody knows what's at stake. And a few motivational words to send us off here. Again, no morality points, but let's be empathetic. I don't know how we'll win this yet, but we will. Even if it kills me. Well, you've already died once, and that didn't slow you down. But let's not tempt fate. Keep yourself safe, Shepard. You too, sir. We'll talk again soon. Anderson out. All right, so we talked about war assets at the end of the mission, so let's take a look at those now. And we can see here that we have gained 100 points from the Ragni workers. Had we left the Queen to die, this asset would have been lost, a fate that has sadly befallen Aralak Company. However, the Krogan unit would have only been worth 75 points. Regardless of the mission outcome, we always secure Grunt as a war asset worth 25 points, so even if Aralak Company goes under, he still survives. Commander, that was a skillful operation back on Sir Kesh, extracting the female Krogan. I had help. Morden Solis knew what he was doing. Yes, Garrus mentioned the Doctor was on your mission through the Omega-4 relay. I'm surprised the Solarian cares about the Krogan. War is full of surprises. <laughs> Rarely the good kind. I'm just happy this one played to our advantage. That's all. Of course, Commander. And after a brief conversation with Victus, we can now do the same thing with Rex. Need something, Shepard? That's it for now, Rex. Let's get back to work. Ah, uh, yeah. Something wrong? Morden. He got his tissue sample from me, all right. Let's just say scalpels were never meant to cut where he cut. All right, and with that, we are now once again wrapping things up with another tour through the ship, including a bit of romance. When this war is over, I hope we find every race that sat back while we bled and get some payback. Yeah, that's a great plan. Follow war with more war. Commander, Cerberus is attacking civilians on Benning. We've been asked to help evacuate the planet. You know, my lab studied the Rachni. Long-distance communication with no time lag, the ability to control workers, and, at close range, the Queen can even speak through dead or dying members of other species. Glad they're on our side. If we can develop instant long-range communication without quantum entanglement, maybe when this war is over. So Trainer has just given us a mission on Benning, and we actually already have another mission to complete on that planet, so a visit is coming up very soon. Don't worry, Edie. Once the Krogan are gone, we'll get rid of the smell. While this body has olfactory sensors, I do not have positive or negative associations with any specific scent. Oh. Well, lucky you. How's Grunt? Our little tank baby's all grown up, huh? Apparently he'll be on his feet and killing again in no time. Well, you learn from the best, Commander. Every time he incinerates someone with a shotgun and does that little laugh, he'll think of you. Edie says it was Rachni down there? Yeah. I thought they were on our side after you saved the Queen on Novaria. It wasn't her fault. She got captured. She's with us now. <laughs> Until the next time the Reapers sing a sour yellow note of whatever. Shepard, I had a question about human behavior. Why is it you never have questions about Asari behavior or Turian behavior? I tried asking Liara questions about the Asari bonding process. She said I do not guard the secrets of the Normandy's crew carefully enough for her to entrust me with such private information. The Asari word she used translates as blabbermouth. I think she has become a more 
private person since becoming the Shadow Broker. Yeah, tell me about it. Now, we are actually going to interrupt Leara's newfound privacy in just a moment, but before we do so, there are, of course, as always, a few other conversations to complete or at least to listen into. Most of it, however, is fairly short, so this will take about 10 minutes or so, evenly spread out across most of our squad. Stop beating yourself up. It was crazy of me to ask you to join the Normandy back then. But I let you down. I let Shepard down. I let everyone listed on that memorial wall down. You had the courage to support Shepard. Joker did. Garrus and Tally did. But Caden didn't. Liara didn't. Were they cowards? I think not. Greg, you're one of the bravest and most loyal men I know. You were meant to be here, right now. We have a war to win. So clear your head and focus. <laughs> okay, okay, you win. It will not be mentioned again. For the first time, we now actually also have visitors in the port observation deck, including everyone's favorite Turian. Wasn't the first time I faced Ragnar. Really? You've seen them before? A few years back, on Novaria, Saren and his minions were trying to extract information from the Ragnar Queen. You saw the Queen? Hell, we spoke to her. You spoke? I can't imagine that. The things you've done, sir, they're amazing. Well, it didn't seem that way at the time. Mostly, you're just clawing your way out of one mess and into another, hoping your ass comes along for the ride. Just one word, Shepard. Grunt. There'll be a lot more dead Reapers now. Siding with the giant spiders again, huh, Shepard? Let's hope this finally pays off. Most people have never even seen Arachni. The Normandy? We're a regular safari tour. If I never see another spider again, I'll die a contented Turian. Unless they have spiders in the afterlife. Damn. And with that, we can leave Garrus to boast about his adventures a bit more, as we once more make our way towards Liara's office. Have we found any new engineers for the Crucible Glyph? Five Exonex Industries scientists who attempted to reverse engineer Prothean technology stolen from planet Garvuk. They are technically still wanted by the Council for hiding Prothean technology. As well, Sonax's part in instigating an illegal war on Garvuk. I'm sure the Council will forgive that for helping with the Crucible. Extend those scientists' amnesty and an invitation. Right away. Now, on the Shadow Broker Terminal, we once again have two messages to take a look at. The first one here, a somewhat amusing report of the Ragnar's arrival at the Crucible Project, which did of course come somewhat unexpected. But they are doing their job, and so is Grunt, as we can see in the other message here. An audio log of Grunt addressing new Aralak company recruits, revealing that he had no issues asserting his dominance as their leader. And from Krogan on Krogan violence, we are now moving on to something a bit more amicable. Busy? I have time if you'd like to talk. In fact, I could use the distraction. What's on your mind? How long it took the Reapers to eradicate the Protheans, and how long they'll need for us. It took them centuries to conquer the Protheans. We're not quite so widespread, but it would still take at least 100 years. It's selfish, but I keep thinking that if we fail, I'm only 109, Shepard. I could live to see the entire cycle come to an end. Only 109, huh? I know. It must seem strange to complain about a thousand-year lifespan. I used to think it was sad that most aliens live such short lives. Maybe it's not such a privilege to outlive so many. To witness so much death. Once again, no morality points here, but we will receive two points of reputation at the end of the conversation. For now, though, let's encourage her as best as we can. Don't drive yourself crazy about this, Liara. We're still in the fight. Only because you're still driving it forward. We finally have other leaders on our side, but none will take us as far as you can. Sometimes I wonder how you do it. And well, there is no question here what the more romantic option of the two is, so let's go with that. Once again, though, this does not lock us into anything. Every time the world's about to end, I think about how mad you'd get if I didn't stop it. I don't know if I could do this without you.
flatterer. I try. I'll see you soon, Shepard. I've never seen Krogan move with such purpose. It's a little terrifying. Thanks for coming by. Greetings, Commander. And since we have already visited Garrus, we can now head over straight to the Met Bay and see how Morton and Eve are getting along. No, that would... Mm. Perhaps stimulate cell regeneration with a... Could... Oh. Ah, but... Should test with... That's worse. Shepard. Eve ready for travel to Tuchanka. Now, we have already asked all of the questions here except for one. The Shroud, however, was only introduced to us a few moments ago, so let's learn a bit more about it. What can you tell me about the Shroud? Climate regulator. Counteracts radiation damage to Tuchanka's atmosphere from nuclear war. Particles emitted from main tower form layer that mitigates ultraviolet bombardment, prevents atmospheric escape of necessary elements. And your people put it up? Yes, when uplift process begin. Demonstration of goodwill to Krogan, stabilize climate, impress population. Combined with technological gifts, easy to gain Krogan support against Rachni. Nice talking with you, Morden. We'll be here if you need me. Continuing to study Shroud in meantime. Now, Eve unfortunately does not have anything new to say to us, so our tour through the crew deck has already reached its end at this point. Over the next three minutes or so, we will now have a few more short conversations with Javik, our engineers, Diana Ellis, and of course also with Cortez and James down in the shuttle bay. For now though, let's get things started with our Prothean ally. Commander, I did not expect to face the Rachni in this cycle, but I am not surprised. You said you used them as weapons? Biological proxies. It was before I was born, but every Prothean had heard the stories. When we knew of them, the Rachni spent their lives singing thoughts to each other. But our scientists were more interested in their biology. The Rachni were well suited to harsh conditions. So we bred them for violence, selecting the most cunning and warlike of the queens. Then we unleashed them upon our enemies. For a time, it worked. Until they became too cunning and warlike and turned on us. We put them down before they could develop any further. We thought they had been exterminated. Yet it seems our experiment evolved into this cycle's nemesis. There was no such thing as trusting the Arachni in our cycle. They were animals. But if they will fight the Reapers now, so be it. I am glad I met the Grunt Krogan. Living in his quarters, I have come to know him better. He will fight the Reapers with great ferocity. And since we are already down here in engineering, we might as well see what Daniels and Donnelly are up to. Not sure what to think about that little mech dog roaming the ship. You mean Sophie? I think she's cute. What purpose does she serve? I guess I have a soft spot for worthless dogs. Look how long I've been with you. Those FBA couplings you got last tour are still holding up. Thanks again, Commander. Commander. Alright, so nothing too interesting here, just a quick call back to Mass Effect 2, which means it is already time to catch up with Miss Alice. So, Arachni, that must get your mouth watering. Can't do a story. That's as classified as it gets. I suppose it would cause a panic, but wouldn't the news drive up recruiting? It might also piss off a Krogan with diplomatic immunity. No thanks. And, well, perhaps it does have its advantages that she is not allowed to report about everything. At least in this case, I think there are more than a few good reasons to keep things classified. The munitions you carry into the field deserve at least a triple check. And great to hear that Cortez is once again being thorough. So let's finish our tour with a few one-liners from James. Rachni? Of all the things that... It's like you got the opposite of a horseshoe up your ass. Grunt is crazier than you, and that's saying something. You're better looking, at least. And what better way to end our weekly ship inspection than with a few compliments, although for the purposes of today's episode, we are not done just yet. Don't worry though, we don't have anything crazy planned at the end here, just the acquisition of a few war assets and credits through planet scanning, which I did not want to put at the beginning of the episode in order to be able to jump right into the mission. So now we are doing it here, giving you the chance to skip things without missing anything important, although I would certainly not be complaining if you stick around for just a few more minutes.
Now, as you have seen, our target is the Gemini Sigma cluster, another cluster under Reaper control and one that also only holds two systems. These two systems are pretty far away from each other though. So far, in fact, that with our 400 units of fuel, we can just barely make it over to the Ming system. I found something. Thankfully though, our fast scan already reveals some fuel, likely not enough to bring us all the way back to the mass relay, but we have another ace up our sleeve for that. In the meantime, we can take care of point of interest number two, located on the rock planet Parak. Apart from being extremely hot, there really isn't much of interest to say about this planet, so let's get the scan over with and obtain another war asset. Now at this point, it is high time that we escape the Reapers and get back to the Han system. However, we don't have enough fuel to get there. Evasion successful. Thankfully though, as you can see here, the game has a built-in system to account for that, because as soon as our fuel drops to zero, we are automatically transported back to the nearest system with a mass relay. Signal confirmed. So what I just showed you is in some ways a method to kind of exploit that system a bit to save some fuel, as I think it should technically be possible to complete this series without ever having to buy fuel. And if against all odds we still have to, then at least our purchasing power just went up a bit, with 10,000 credits salvaged from the ice planet Mavigan. Finally then, we can recover a bit more fuel just south of the mass relay, and with that, another cluster has been fully surveyed and we have reached the end of today's episode. In the next one, I think we will actually go to Benning to complete that mission that Trainer just gave us, and of course, Primarch Victus is also still missing his undercover Turian platoon, so we are certainly not lacking in options. Still, for today, let's wrap things up at this point. And as always, if you have enjoyed the video, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already, grab some merch over on shop.petecomplete.com or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.